Today, I wanna to share some editing tips for editing your images in Darktable. So if you're ready, let's do it. So here's the image I'm going to be working on. And when we're done, it's going to look like this. How cool is that? All right, may not be your style, but I'm gonna show you a lot of different cool things you can do with Darktable and give you some pro tips for editing your images. So let's go ahead and clear this out here. And this is the base image that came out of camera. And if we take a look at the histogram here, we can see that it's severely underexposed, which is pretty interesting. Since I shot this with an exposure or a shutter speed of 30 seconds, so I still didn't nail the exposure in camera. So now I need to fix it. And what I'm going to do to fix it is use the exposure module. So I'm going to increase the exposure and as you can see, the histogram begins moving to the right to fill in that gap. And if I go to around two stops, we can see that the histogram is beginning to be clipped right here on the right side. So I might be losing some detail. So to verify that, I'm going to use my clipping indicators, which are located down here. And it's actually this icon right here. Once you click on that, you will see a red or blue or both overlays on your image indicating that your image is being clipped or data is being clipped. So the red overlay here in the sky is an overexposure. So I'm losing detail in the sky. So I increased the exposure too much. There's some blue overlays. It's kind of hard to see. I'm going to use my scroll wheel on my mouse to scroll in. And you can see little specks of blue in the tree stumps. And I'm okay with that. I'm not going to try and correct that because it's not going to really help the image that much because we're not going to see the detail in there anyway, especially when I'm done editing and darkening up that part of the image. So what I do want to do though, is I want to lower the exposure value until these red overlays, these little dots here disappear. So I'm just going to grab my slider and move it to the left until they're all gone. So right about there. So reading the histogram is awesome for telling you where to start your editing. It's going to tell you if it's over or underexposed and what parts of the image need to be fixed. So in this case, the highlights and the white points needed to be fixed in order to correct the exposure. So once you have the exposure done, you then have to determine what's next. Well, for me, that would be the white balance because I see that the image is very blue and I think it's too blue for my taste. So again, I didn't nail the white balance in camera, so I had to fix it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on white balance here. And these are the settings that were in camera. So I should have increased the Kelvin temperature to make it warmer in camera. Since I didn't get that right in camera, I'm going to go ahead and drag this to the right to, I think, right around 12,000 for the Kelvin. And I want to increase the red tint a little bit as well to add a little bit of red and reduce green. Now, when it comes to white balance for an image like this, it's more of a personal preference. There's also some white balance settings down here that will help you set the white balance to remove color tints. So if you click on your eyedropper tool here, what you want to do is you want to click on an area in your image that should be either pure white or pure black or pure gray. And then once you click on it, it samples those colors in there and removes the colors so that that part of the image is pure white, pure black or pure gray. And that removes the color cast, which in effect is white balancing your image. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close out this module now because what I want to do next is I want to adjust the contrast. So I'm going to grab my tone curve here because this is my method or my preferred method for creating contrast. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create what is known as an S curve. So we should have a histogram behind this linear line right here and inside of this grid. And that's going to represent the tonal ranges of your image, which matches the histogram you have up here. So as soon as I click on this line, we see the histogram. So this side is the black points and the shadows. We have our mid-tones or exposure in the middle. We have our highlights and our white points on the end. Same with your histogram. So what I want to do is I want to increase the brightness of the highlights and darken the shadows. So I'm going to click and drag up here to brighten up the highlights, but you may have noticed that I'm overexposing the sky here. So what I need to do now is decide if I'm okay 
with losing detail here or if I should lower this setting here back to where it was, which is still showing some overexposure, and then just darkening up the shadows. I think I'm okay with making this part of the image overexposed for two reasons. One, it's not that important of an element of the image. There's no detail there anyways that I can really see, no texture or anything like that. Two, I'm going to darken up the sky later on with another tool, which is going to compensate and reduce the overexposure here. So these are things that you have to think about and consider as you're editing. What other tools do you plan on using and can you fix it with a different type of edit? Or should you reduce the adjustment that you made with that specific tool? So increasing the highlights or making the highlights brighter and making the shadows darker adds contrast. And we can see that when we turn off this tone curve module or any module by clicking on this icon here to turn it off. And this is a great way to see the before and after. And as you can see, it's really flat here. And now we have some more contrast. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and close this off. And what I wanna do next is I want to remove this tree branch that is peeking in over here on the side. I'm gonna use my scroll wheel here to zoom in so I can see it a little bit better. And then I can click and drag to navigate around the image a little bit more if needed, or you can actually do that up here in this navigation panel right here. So for this, I'm going to use our retouching tool, which is in the effects group. And what I'm going to use is the shape tool. We also have an oval, a path, and a brush. I prefer using the circle tool or the circle shape for this particular image. So with my scroll wheel, I can increase or decrease the size of that shape. And what I want to do is make it just a little bit larger than the element that I'm going to be retouching. So once I click here, Darkroom is going to add another circle, which is used to sample another part of the image to be used to cover up or retouch the area that needs to be retouched. Most of the time, you're gonna to have to click on this circle here and move it into position to create a better point of sampling. The other thing I wanna do before I move on is I wanna turn off these two circles to review the area that's being retouched. And I can kind of see some blurriness in the shape of that circle right here. So what I'm going to do is click here again to turn it on and I'm going to increase the feathering of this shape. And we do that by holding down our shift key. Make sure you're in between these two lines here and then use the scroll wheel on your mouse to increase it. And then it's going to smooth out and feather that a little bit better. Now, the other thing I'm noticing now that we're zoomed in is all this digital noise and I wanna get rid of that. Now, typically when I shoot at ISO 400, I don't have this much digital noise, but because I had a 30 second exposure, that tends to increase the amount of digital noise. And because my image was extremely underexposed, when I fixed it, it added additional noise. So that's why I always recommend trying to nail your exposure in camera at least as close as possible and you'll end up with a higher quality image. All right, I'm going to come up here to the search module and type in noise to find our denoise tool and we have four options. Now, which one do you use? Well, this first one is for astrophotography or designed for that type. Surface blur is going to apply an edge wear surface blur to denoise or smoothen the textures. I've never used this one, so I don't know that much about this one. We have denoise profiled, which is more of a common type of denoise filter or tool that you'll see in other software like Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw. And then we have raw denoise, which is a more complex advanced type of denoise filter. So again, which one of these are you going to use? Well, it depends on your image and the type of noise that you have. So for this camera, my Nikon Z6, I found that the raw denoise works best for that camera. But I also have a Nikon D500 where I found that this option, the profiled option, works better for images from that camera. So you have to experiment 
based on the camera that you have and the type of noise that is introduced. So I'm gonna go ahead and use raw denoise. And once I turn this on, it's going to automatically remove all the noise. Boom, it's gone. The only problem is by default, the smoothing effect to remove the noise is intense and I lose a lot of texture and detail. That's where this extra linear line here and this grid and other options here give me more control over how much noise is reduced or removed and how much texture or detail is lost. So I don't want it to be this smooth because it looks fake, it looks plastic, especially when I'm applying this tool on portraits, the skin looks really unnatural. So what I want to do is I want to introduce a little bit of noise back by clicking right here and dragging down towards noisy. Next, I want to increase the texture and the detail and I have two options, either coarse or fine. So fine will be smoother, coarse will be more intense. You'll, you'll see more of that texture come back. So I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag this one down and this node or anchor point I'm gonna bring down as well. Yes, we have some more digital noise, but it's not as bad as it was before. Plus there's some texture in there. Now, granted, this was a 30 second exposure. So we're not gonna have a lot of detail anyway because of the effects of the water being smoothed out during the process of the long exposure. I just wanted to bring back a little bit more texture so it wasn't too smooth. All right, so the next step is to darken the sky, the water, and add a color tint to the image as well because I think the colors right now are a little boring and I wanna add a little bit more color to it. So I'm gonna click on this icon here to bring back all the editing modules. So the tool for this job is going to be the graduated density tool, at least for this image. This is the tool that I like for this effect. So once you click on your graduated density module here, you're gonna see this horizontal line on your image. And this is the halfway point of the image right now. And we also have two triangles on either end, which you can click on and then rotate the line according to the direction of the adjustment because what it's going to do is it's going to apply the adjustment from the top down to this line. So 100% of the edit will be applied up here at the top and it will gradually decrease to zero once it reaches this line. And then of course, anything below that line will not receive that edit. So I want to apply this to the entire sky. So I'm gonna click and drag this down to the horizon. And then in my graduated density module here, I'm going to increase the density. And by default, it's already increased it by one stop. So if I turn this off, we can see that the sky is darker and the sky is no longer overexposed in this area. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase this to around two stops or two EV. So right about there looks pretty good. And then I'm going to use my hue slider here to change the color, but nothing happens. And that's because we need to increase the saturation as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag this over to the right, to right about there. And that's not the color I want. I want it to be more bluish to purple. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase the hue slider here to the right. So maybe I think right there looks pretty good. All right, I wanna do the same thing with the water now, but I wanna use different settings. And that's why I didn't drop this all the way down to the bottom. So to create another density adjustment here in the color adjustments, we need to create a new instance of this module. So we're gonna click right here and select new instance to get another graduated density module. So again, the line is applied in the middle of the image and it's starting from the top down and we want to reverse that. So I can either click and drag and rotate it that way or we can use the rotation tool, which I'm going to use. I'm gonna drag it all the way to the right here to get 180 degrees. I want this to start at the horizon again, so I'm gonna click and drag this back down. And now the edits are being applied from down here and up. So I think one stop looks pretty good. And as you can see, the blue overlay is much more brighter or intense than it was before. And that's because I'm clipping more of the black points and the shadows 
and losing detail in that part of the image. But I'm okay with that for this particular image because it is at night and it's more of a silhouette of the tree stumps. And I'm not really interested in keeping all the detail. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and increase the saturation again to about where we were before. I'm gonna increase the hue to the right again to, I don't know, what do you think? I don't wanna go as purple as before. I want it to be a little bit more blue. So I think maybe right there looks pretty good. Now, the other thing that you may have noticed once we darkened up the sky is the remnants of dust spots. And they're much more noticeable or visible now than they were before when the sky wasn't as dark. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in right here. Go ahead and navigate over here to the left and we can see a spot here and there's a couple other spots here as well. So I'm gonna come over here to my effects group and I'm going to grab my spot removal tool and I'm going to use the circle shape again. I'm gonna go ahead and make this smaller so it's just a little bit larger than this dust spot here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click and Darktable does its magic, but it's too close to the other circle. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this to the outside. Let's go ahead and hide it to confirm that it's a smooth adjustment. It looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new shape for each of the additional dust spots and adjust it accordingly. I think I'm going to make the feathering smaller. So I'm gonna hold down my shift key and then scroll to make it smaller. All right, one more shape here for this dust spot. And I'm gonna go ahead and move this over here. Now, the other thing I'm noticing now that I'm zoomed into the sky is some color banding. And that again happened when I darkened the sky. So I'm gonna come up here to the search module and look for dithering, which is used for removing color banding or at least minimizing it so it's not as noticeable. So once I turn this on, Darktable again will do its magic and boom, the color banding is gone. How cool is that?